guys, welcome to another episode of Poor Man Mods. Today, it's not really a mod, but I'm going to show you how to check the breakaway force of your limited slip differential. Now, if you've been following this drift missile build, you would know that we got our rear end shimmed. So, what that means is, when you open up the rear end, there's limited slip that has a bunch of clutches and some gears and some shims in there. And the shims make it tighter or looser. So we had shims added to our rear end, so it's tighter and the force of the force that takes the clutches to slip is greater. So I think the factory torque breakaway force on this car is like 60 foot pounds. So the clutches are engaged and spinning both wheels up until there's a difference of 60 pounds of force on the rear wheels and then they'll break away and then one wheel will spin and one wheel won't. We had a kit installed at a shop that supposedly brought the breakaway force up to 250 foot pounds. And we're going to check and see if the breakaway force has increased with this. Now to check it, there, you can either check it in the car or off the car. And we're going to check it in the car because it's a lot easier. If you do it off the car, you have to have like a vice and a whole bunch of tools and sometimes like when the shop checked it they made a plate that went across the rear end where the axles connect and had a welded nut on it and then they had two guys on it and it was it was very difficult. So we're gonna install it on the car which is easiest and probably what most of you guys will do to test out yours. Unfortunately we only have access right now I have access to a torque wrench that only goes up to a hundred pounds. So we're probably not going to see what exactly the breakaway force of this rear end is today, but I'm going to show you how to check yours. Now what you want to do, you want to make sure the car is in neutral, not in gear. Some people say in gear, but it's got to be in neutral, okay? And then jack up one of the rear wheels. In this case, we're doing the driver's side, so we have the jack under the control arm for this wheel, and the other wheel is on the ground. And you want to make sure all the other wheels are chucked. You don't want this rolling across the floor or whatever. You just want to play it safe. So then, once you have it jacked up, wheel off, you also have to take off the cotter pin that holds on the axle nut, which was a pain to get off on this car. So, in theory, if the factory breakaway force in this car was 60 pounds, we're going to take this torque wrench to 60 pounds. Okay, it's right at 60. So, if this was the factory rear end, 60 foot pounds, it shouldn't break away. It should be solid right there. If it's worn, it might be less. So then let's take it up to 70. So if this was the factory rear, 70 foot-pounds should break it loose. Which it does not, because our rear end is modified. And to check your breakaway force, if you have a better torque wrench than this, this only goes up to 100, if you have like a 250 foot-pound one, you got a big range of weight. So what you would do, say we're going to test this car to see how bad the rear is. We will take it to 60, and... If it doesn't break loose, you increase the weight on the wrench, maybe in five or 10 pound increments until it breaks away. Once it breaks away, take it back a foot pound. If it breaks away again, take it back another one. And you wanna take it to the foot pound right before where it starts to break away. And then that's the breakaway force. Or maybe it's the exact pound to where it does break away. Either, like, you'd have maybe a one or two pound difference. So the kit that we got, is supposed to take it to 250 foot-pounds, which I'm really bummed. I don't have access to our big torque wrench right now, but that doesn't really matter because I'm showing you guys how to do it. I already know that this one is well above 200. So right now, we have this set at 100 foot-pounds. And it still doesn't break loose. So, 
we can easily say that the breakaway force of this rear end is over 100 foot-pounds. Now that might not be the case for most factory differentials. They might be under 100, 150. If you have an open rear, there's no breakaway force. It's just always open. That's why it's an open rear. It's always broken. Now, like with my brother's 240, he's got a cause differential in there. I'm not sure what the breakaway force in that is, but I'm pretty sure it's similar right around 250 foot-pounds. Now, what this kit did that raised our breakaway force, it allowed for us to do more better drifting and better donuts and better burnouts and better traction because originally, like if we try to drift, um, we could only, I could only drift turning to the left because um, this wheel always wanted to have traction and the passenger side wheel was the one that always wanted to spin. So drifting to the left put more weight on the wheel that wanted to spin. So it gave it slightly more traction and took weight off of this one. So this wheel was spinning and then that wheel would spin too. So we could only really drift to the left. We could never drift to the right because when we did this wheel always had traction. This is the driver's side. This wheel always had traction and the passenger side wheel was always spinning. Now if you watched our burnout video, you saw it was burning out posi. Almost every time we burned out, it was posi, but drifting was very rarely posi. So this brought up the breakaway force, allowing there to be a greater difference in friction or traction between the wheels, which means that both wheels will spin more often. It's also harder to turn at very low speeds. You can feel the car dragging because the wheels are locked and when you turn one wheel goes faster than the other. But when it's locked like this, it's kind of fighting. So you could definitely feel that it was increased. So now that it is increased, now we can go have fun with this car and do some drifting. But not yet because we're still working with the tune. We have to install the injectors. But once we install the injectors, and once we tune it, we're, good. we're going to increase the steering angle a little bit, which will be a poor man mod, and then we will be able to utilize this shim kit and this awesome rear end that we have now, and it's going to be awesome. So I hope that you learned how to check your breakaway force. I would recommend that you get a better torque wrench than this 3 8 snap-on one that goes up to 100 foot-pounds. Get a bigger one. Um, but yeah, it's super easy. Just keep increasing the foot-pounds on this until the wheel spins. And make sure it's in neutral. It can't